It's uh, your third visit to Ukraine since you've become president. Why choose specifically Europe Day to come here? What message are you trying to send here? Well, we are here on the 9th of May specifically to say that we stand with Ukraine and we will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. Ukraine and Ukrainians, ever since the illegal and provoked invasion by Russia a little bit over two years ago, have been fighting for our freedom, for our values. The first thing they did immediately upon the invasion was look to Europe for help. And Europe, in fact, flung its doors wide open for the millions of refugees that sought uh, um, homes that were being bombed here. Two years later, the situation is still the same. So we thought it apt in order to come here on this day, not only to reiterate our message, say what we've done so far in terms of helping Ukraine and fighting this war and working towards peace, but also now looking towards the next few months where a peace summit is coming up in June in Switzerland. And it is within this context that the European Parliament will play a very important role. And uh, it's your third visit. What difference do you see from your very first visit? You were the first European leader in here mm -hmm. after the war broke out. Yeah, in fact, it's my second visit to Kiev because the second time I went to Lviv, which is a different city. When I first came here, it was just a few weeks after the war broke out. The whole city was under curfew. There was nobody in the streets and every road was barred. Uh, the difference today is that people are living, they are going from one place to another, knowing that at any moment, as we've just seen on the way here, um, uh, a bomb could come down uh, and destroy a building, a school, a, a museum, a power plant, uh, knowing that they will need to find shelter, but at the same time that they need to continue with their life. This is the biggest difference I see. But what has also not changed is the spirit of Ukrainians in defending their country and defending their country because they love it and they want peace with dignity, peace with justice and peace that really, uh, that, that will guarantee their freedom, which is essentially what we all live for as Europeans. But again, we're talking about peace. At the same time, Ukraine is crying out for weapons. Um, Russia is determined that it can win this war. And as you just said, we've just visited two sites which were only recently bombed. What hope is there for peace? Well, you know, we never give up hope. Uh, President Zelensky, who we will meet soon, has a peace plan. It is according to that peace plan that we are going step by step in towards ensuring nuclear security because Russia is specifically targeting critical energy infrastructure. Food security, Ukraine is the breadbasket of the world. How are we going to ensure that countries in Africa continue to depend on Ukraine for food, which is necessary? And three, protection of children. Thousands of children have been abducted and taken into Russia. The President Zelensky's wife is working. We will also meet with her in order to bring them back. It is along those lines with Ukraine that they will be able to start to work towards peace. But important to, to reiterate, nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine on the table. And I think that is finally becoming a given. And it is one where over 100 countries will get together in June in Switzerland in order to hammer it down into the next steps. Thank you.